Neolithic age. The period following the Mesolithic age is called Neolithic age or New Stone Age. Some areas in India where Neolithic sites have been excavated are Kashmir, the Northern Vindhyas, the Middle Ganga Valley, the Eastern, Northeastern and Southern India. Beginning of Agriculture In the Neolithic age, man changed from food gatherer to food producer. But this change did not come about suddenly. Man harvested the food grains which grew wild in some regions. He had no idea that grains could be planted. Perhaps one day, someone observed that the grains swept away from threshing and deposited on the dung heap sprouted and in course of time produced grains. This was the beginning of agriculture that required a settled life for closely watching the plants to grow. Agriculture thus paved the way for settled life. Agriculture brought about many changes in the life of early man. There was a great change in his food habits. He began to live on food grains and vegetables. He also started making cloth from cotton that he cultivated. Growing crops assured man of a continuous supply of food. Although man still hunted, the rearing of animals assured him of a continuous supply of meat, milk and hides. Man could thus produce more food than he required. He was at last free from the continuous search of food and used his free time developing new skills. To take care of his crops, man needed to stay at one place for a long time. Hence, permanent human settlements began to be established and community life began to take shape. Places of living which were on the hill slopes were segregated from farming areas which were closer to streams and rivers. Community Life When man became a farmer, his interaction with others grew, which made him wiser. Living in a group made him aware of his surroundings and gave him opportunities to try newer and safer methods of farming and use of better tools. This process made people divide work among themselves. They had sufficient time as the pressure of searching for food and wasting time in hunting was completely eliminated. Farming and herding involved full-time attention. Early man had to live near the places of farming and herding to protect the crops and husbandry from wild animals or other mishaps. This forced him to settle down permanently and man began to live in villages. He constructed huts of mud and dried grasses as shelter to protect himself from extreme weather. Huts were made close to each other like a colony, surrounded by a common fence of bushes to keep ferocious animals away. The concept of families came into being. The families living in a Neolithic village were closely related and shared the same customs, beliefs and methods of worship. A group of such families is called a tribe. The customs and practices of present-day tribes living in remote villages have not changed much over the ages. By observing them, we can draw conclusions about the lifestyles of Neolithic tribes. As groups became larger, distribution of work came about. Individuals worked for community and divided the harvested yields among themselves. There was no segregation of the rich and poor. The tribes jointly owned natural wealth. Probably, the division of work depended on age, wisdom and physical strength. Perhaps the strongest and the ablest man was the leader who made rules and regulations for the entire tribe. Men had occupations such as hunting and ploughing and grazing large herds of animals, whereas Women took care of home and children. Women, children and old people performed simple agricultural tasks like sowing and harvesting and protecting crops from pests. Both men and women possibly took part in pot making, weaving 
and making tools, weapons and ornaments. Tools There was a great improvement in Neolithic tools and weapons. They can be distinguished from the Paleolithic tools chiefly because of their higher utility and more skillful construction. Man still made his tools and weapons from stone, but they were stronger and sharper than before. As farming demanded improved tools, they invented stone axes, sickles, hammers, bows and scrapers. Man also made spindles and bone needles. The small polished tools, called microliths, were fixed on to a wood or bone for easy hunting. Most of the heavy tools were used in digging and levelling the land, whereas sharper tools were used in skinning the animals and preparing meat. Invention of Wheel The wheel was a remarkable invention for Neolithic man. He might have got the idea while rolling log of wood. He may have realised that by rolling them, he could make things move faster. This made him understand that the use of round objects would enable easy movement. Wheels not only improved transport, but also quickened the pace of development. The potter's wheel improved the process of making pots. Perhaps the wheel was also used in spinning thread, which led to weaving. Once weaving was known, man used cotton and wool to make cloth. Pottery For storage of surplus grains, early man made baskets out of forest twigs, applied wet clay around the baskets and dried them in the sun. While these baskets were useful for storing dry grains, they could not store milk, meat and water in it. During due course of time, man learnt to bake clay vessels on fire. Man could now store liquids and cook food in baked clay vessels. Religion or Faith Early man considered lightning, thunder, earthquakes, flood, etc. as the wrath of nature. He feared these processes and as such started the elements, worshipping the elements to ward off these happenings. He worshipped water, fire, rain, thunder and also the sun, the earth and the stars. It is believed that domestic animals were also revered in thankfulness of the bounties they provided. Disposal of the Dead Megaliths Dead was also mysterious to Neolithic people. When one of the members died, they buried him with all his personal tools weapons and pottery. They thought that he will use it in his next birth. They often marked these burial places with huge rectangular blocks of stones called megaliths. A number of megaliths have been unearthed at sites such as Adi Chennalur in South India. Neolithic Settlements in India Remains of several Neolithic settlements such as Mirkad near the Bolan Pass in Pakistan, Bursa Home in Jammu and Kashmir and Daoj Ali Harding in Assam have been found in the Indian subcontinent. One of the earliest villages sites found in the Indian subcontinent is at Mirkad. The village had rectangular houses made of mud and mud bricks. Each house had several rooms. Some of the rooms were used for storing grains. In some places, like Bursa home, people lived in deep pits that had steps leading into them. Ovens, ash and charcoal have been found inside as well as outside these pits. So, people living there must have cooked both indoors and outdoors. Here, hunting gathering was more important than farming and herding. The people at Bursa home probably domesticated animals such as dogs and goats. Polished stone tools such as polished axes and chests have been found at all Neolithic sites in the Indian subcontinent. At many sites, microliths and bone tools too have been found. People at these sites learned to make pottery 
on potter's wheel. They also painted designs on some of their pots. The Neolithic people of the Indian subcontinent usually buried their dead. Different types of graves have been found at different places. At Mirgarh and Pursahom, for instance, the dead were buried in pits, sometimes with domesticated animals. At Pursahom, we find the practice of burying the pet dogs alongside the master's grave, which is not found elsewhere in India. The animals could have been meant to serve as food for the dead. Trivia Sir John Lubbock coined the term Neolithic in his book Prehistoric Times, first published in 1865. The term refers to an age in which stone implements were more skillfully made and more varied in form. It was V. Gordon Child who defined the Neolithic Calcolithic culture as a self-sufficient food economy. Miles Burkett put forward the following four characteristics a culture should fulfill to be called a Neolithic culture. 1. Agricultural practice 2. Domestication of animals 3. Polished and ground stone tools 4. Pottery manufacture